everybody. How you doing? Hope everyone's having a great week. We made it to yet another Wednesday, which is very exciting. So I'm so glad you're here. Let me, oh, that's a lot of light right there. Let's uh, lower that light there a little bit and go this way. We should be okay. So how's it going? We have Roy here. How are you? And we also have Brad and John. Great to see you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me <clears throat> on this Wednesday evening. So this is actually part five of Painting the Irish Last. So I'm very excited. This is when things start getting really fun, I feel. So I'm just going to increase the... Uh, okay, so I, I think it looks pretty good right now. How's the sound? Everything good with the sound, guys? I'm sure the sound is fine, but you know, a good check with you guys is always great. So here we are within the first minute. So, got my water, and we're gonna go ahead and attack this uh, painting. So let's have, let that happen. Got Franz List in the background, which is good. Thanks so much for the Sound checks. Hey, Hillbilly, how you doing? Good to see you. So everyone, thank you so much. Sound is good. No weird uh, popping noise or anything like that. So I'm just going to zoom in, just make sure that my focus is, is on the money. There we go. The beauty of doing a live stream with a DSLR. It's a whole different ball game. And okay, so I have my two airbrush set up. These are my, this is the Extreme Patriot Arrow, my custom Extreme Patriot Arrow. And this is also, this one here is my custom Extreme Patriot 105. I like this, it's a big cup when I'm doing a two airbrush system. The larger cup could be for background, stuff like that. Smaller cup could be for detail. So I like having them both. And right now I have the light mixture in here and the medium mixture in there. So like I said, I always go with the two airbrush system uh, when we go further. So this is part five. So this is actually, this is hours nine and 10 into this particular piece. Colette, how's it going? Hey Mike, how are you, sir? Nameless subscriber, good to see you. So, so glad everyone is here. And see if I can lighten this up just a tad, maybe a little bit right here. There we go. Just want to get it perfect for you guys or as close to perfect as I can get it. So I'm going to wear my glove because at this point you definitely want to wear a glove. You don't want to be smudging everything and literally be really, really horrible, you know. Thank you, Nameless Subscriber, says it's coming along. Uh, not this one, definitely next one, which would be perfect for St. Patty's Day. So I think that's cool. Next Wednesday is St. Patrick's Day, so I'm excited about that, being Irish and painting the Irish last. So we're just going to bring her over here. Oh, we don't have the, uh, let's see if I can get I want to see if I can actually go ahead and get that uh, chat viewer here. Let's see. Uh, YouTube widgets, live chat viewer. Let's see if it works. I'll put it over here. Let's see. We can make this happen. go move this here this way you can see who's here who's talking yada 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 let's see so we'll go to chat and authorize let's see how this works this should work and there we are okay cool now I just have to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger because it's really 
really teeny tiny here. And I'll just raise this. There we go. Now everyone can see it and the fun can begin. All right, so I'll go back to this screen so I can see you guys. Oh, thank you, Nameless Subscriber. I appreciate that very much. And so, okay, so in the light mixture, remember when you start out your, you know, whether it's uh, just the paint session of that particular day or even just going into a particular painting, you want to make sure you always start out with the light mixture, okay? Very, very important to start out with the light mixture. So let's make this happen. Okay, so when I start, you know, uh, a new session, I want to really remember where I left off, right? And I remember when I was last working, I was working on some freckles. So let's see if we can continue that a little bit. And I have my reference over here. And you always, 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 always want to test things out on a scrap piece of paper first. You don't want to go too dark. Remember, distance is everything. So I'm just getting a feeling of what I'm doing. And I'm going to get my glasses for this. Ooh. Okay. Always take your time when you're painting, when you're changing colors or, or, or what have you. Always make sure you take your time. So you see I'm going to be doing a couple of little freckles here. One second rule, right? Make sure that you are paying attention. And if you go too dark, don't worry about that. We can always come back and erase that. Now the trick is make sure they're not equidistant in the same size because then it will look contrived. So let's see. Yes, that's true. That is so true. I almost poked my eye. Oh my goodness. So continuing with some some little freckles here. Now in the light area, they are very few and far between. So I'm just gonna move around. You don't wanna put more that are there, so you wanna really pay attention to, you know, what's there, what's not there. And start out far away, you can always come closer. John, how's it going? Good to see you. Scott, how are you, sir? And if I zoom out, I can definitely see if I got a little too crazy. Maybe in one spot. I have a little bit of white pastel here. And I'm just gonna tap it, and you see I can calm down any any uh, freckle that went a little crazy. I can definitely do that. And then I'm gonna work on this shadow plane right here on the nostril. One second rule is always gonna keep us honest, right? Always, always. work on that 
that cheekbone. She has a very gorgeous cheekbone there, so I definitely want to pay attention to that. And you see I have a few freckles here. Make sure you don't get too dark. You can always calm them down, right? Definitely. And... There we go. And freckles, you know, in certain areas, they're very close in value with what's around it. And it's important to make sure that you don't, with detail in the face, or even in the body, you want to make sure that the values have the correct relationship. That they're not too far away from each other, because then it will look at a balance. So that's very important. So the nameless subscriber says, do I clear coat my work after it's finished or anything like that? Um, not at all. Uh, I studied pastel at the National Academy School of Fine Arts with Harvey Dinnerstein. And he is one of the top airbrush, um, top pastel painters of this century. And he always told me that if you use fixative or anything like that, you're going to darken what you worked so hard for. So he said as long as it's under glass and matted, that should stay good for hundreds of years. So yes, clear coat I'll definitely stay away from because we don't know what it's going to do archivally, uh, you know, maybe 50 years down the line. So we want to be careful of that. Great question. So you can see with the Extreme Patriot Arrow, the kind of control I can get for $150, the same control that one gets with a custom Micron. And I believe the custom Micron right now is running for around $500, is that correct? The uh, CMC Plus. So we don't, we don't have to spend the money to get excellent material, you know, whether it be paper or airbrushes or paintbrushes, you don't have to break the piggy bank. You definitely could do it for a very low price, uh, and, but still get very good quality. So I customized these for you guys. And if you're interested, just go to paintedglyphs.com. And there you'll have information on how to get one of these beautiful airbrushes. As you see, I'm keeping moving around right now, which is very important. Uh, the name of the subscriber said he tried fixative and clear coat and found it brightens up all the colors. But that's true. You don't know what effect it will have in the long term. Well, yes, true. And plus, it's going to change what you work so hard for. So when you finish your work, you were okay. I'm like, I'm okay with this. This is how it's going to end. Uh, it's a finished piece. And then you clear coat it. And then it's something different than your intent. So with that, that's a reason why I won't clear coat it. You know, definitely. And fixative not only changes the value of your artwork, but changes the texture. The actual surface texture. So I stay away from that. But that's how I was trained, you know. $569, Roy said. Look at that. So, yes, you can see the kind of detail that you can get for a fraction of the cost. Definitely. And you see, I can start to come in with the medium mixture, but like I said, you know, when you are fresh into a painting, you definitely don't want to come in with the medium or dark mixture. Just bad news, right? Just a bad news decision. There we go. And with 
the light mixture, I'm putting some detail, I'm sculpting, all that kind of stuff. And here in the corner of the eye, we have some detail. Let's zoom in and I'll show you what I'm doing. Here, there's some detail right here along the eye. One second rule is always going to keep you honest. And make sure that the white of the eyes is really not white at all. It's always a grayish blue color, you know, unless they're in a like very warm environment. So this is the time when we're actually going to go in and start working on some individual hairs in, in this eyebrow. And just make sure that when you're painting, you always want to make sure that you keep things organic. Try and always avoid being equidistant, right? And the same size. Always avoid that. And I'm going to go into the medium mixture real fast. Pretty soon we're going to be coming in with the dark accents, with the dark mixture, but not quite yet. There we go. Hey Phil, how are you sir? Good to see you. And I'm just coming in, <coughs> excuse me, with some detail here, there we go, and let's see exactly how dark we can get with that medium mixture, and maybe we can start with a couple of the eyelashes here. Just a little detail here and there, nothing crazy. We'll get back to it. But it's always good to establish. Now she really has no eyelashes uh, on the bottom, right? There's no eyelashes there, you know? And let's move over to the other eye. What we do on one eye, we have to do on the other. Okay. And this is where you will double check, make sure your drawing's okay, make sure everything is situated fine, you know. Alexa, lower volume. Okay, just lowering my classical music in the background. Hey Rick, how's it going? Oh, great, the airbrush arrived. So fantastic. So you're opening it up as my, uh, oh, up as I'm painting. That's great. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on it. So great. Thank you, Rick. So Rick's in Canada. So that's fantastic. That's great to hear. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of my eraser techniques and 
really feel like where I might have gotten a little overzealous, like right here on the edge of the iris, I think I made it a little too dark. So we're just going to adjust that. Same thing over here, the border of that iris is a little too, how do we say, a little too strong. So we're just going to calm that down a little bit. And here we're going to keep dark, but on this side we have some significant light uh, in the uh, white of the eye, which as we say, really is hardly ever white. There we go. And then right here, we're going to do the edge. There we go. Just really accentuate that. Now this is a very aggressive eraser, but I'm going very soft. So even an aggressive eraser can be very soft, uh, even if you are, let's say, um, being very gentle. So it's all in your, it's all in the touch. Now always know I'm, I'm going back and forth with the light and the dark, you know. Oh, fantastic. That's very cool, Rick. Definitely. No, very cool. Yes, Rick will definitely let you guys know how how the Extreme Patriot Arrow worked out, you know? Okay. And you're always checking on your drawing. We're always, always checking on our drawing. So we have a couple more freckles here while we're here. Let's put them in. One second rule. Make sure we don't make them equidistant in the same size. So that's enough for that. We'll zoom out and we'll see we're getting those eyes a little more in focus. Now looking here, I can see that I was a little overzealous with the bottom part of the eyelid there. But also, I think that there's more space. Let's make that more space like that. There we go make her eye a little bit bigger because it is on the left side of the left eye. And of course going back and forth especially with the light mixture uh, you have a lot more wiggle room. You get values a lot slower. Hey David how you doing sir? Always good to see you. And I'm just gonna, like I said, this is like where we really move around a lot and we look for relative value changes. Uh, we're not going for the exact value even now. We're just looking for relative value changes. And I'm a good distance away, probably about maybe three inches at least. At least three inches. Hey Wendy, good to see you. How are you? And I like the needed eraser, especially at the later stages. You can pull up certain larger areas of tone and it helps you to actually sort of sculpt. Make sure that you're making the larger shapes three-dimensional and so important. Oh my God, did you have another heart attack, David? Or is this the same one uh, that you had not too long ago, like about six weeks ago? Because I know you had some heart issues. If you did have a heart attack, I'm really sorry to hear that. 
Oh my god. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're taking it easy. And as you can see, very slowly we're just building things up. Okay, so in this light part of where the forehead is, you're not off the hook just because the values are light, you know, and they're close to one another. You still have to go ahead and establish that because that is really, even though it's so subtle, it's describing the form and the form of the muscles and the bone of her forehead. So that's very important. Yes, and oh my god, it was just a week ago. Wow. I hope you're taking care of yourself, sir. I'm taking it easy. just going to zoom out and continue over here so there's some activity over here as far as shadow goes again the values are very close to the light so they're extremely subtle but if you do miss them you will uh, actually miss a chop an opportunity to make her forehead three-dimensional and also paying attention to the anatomy as well, which is very important. There we go. See that turning? See how it's becoming more three dimensional? Oh, okay, great. So you're taking it easy. So that's good to see, definitely. Oh, look at that. Wendy went to a movie shoot. How exciting is that? So tell us what happened. So now we can go ahead and start doing some individual hairs. And this is where, you know, the practicing of the, um, the dagger strokes are key. You know, so see if I can zoom in on that hairline, just show you what I'm doing. Wow, Brad, thank you so much. I appreciate that. So right here, we have the hairline. And so we're gonna do like the teeniest, tiniest dagger strokes you ever saw. And we're just gonna put them in. They're very light. And you're gonna make sure that they're coming in at different directions. We move this over here, coming in at different directions. But you wanna have control of your airbrush and have an airbrush where you can do these real tiny dagger strokes. So the proof is in the pudding whether or not the Extreme Patriot Arrow can do everything a Custom Micron can do. Just got to get used to it. You know, you have me if you have any questions if you purchased one or thinking of purchasing one. great that's fantastic David that would be great let me know I'm gonna throw in some extra gifts for you okay so that would be fantastic David you just let me know when you're ready because I do have a couple that are available right now which is great so I would be able to get them out to you ASAP
And you can see that, you know, and I'm going to move back into the medium mixture because I want to switch it around, you know, have a couple of dark hairs there as well. So I'm just moving that back and forth. So we'll go ahead and put, but you can see how sharp I can make these little daggers. I mean, it's really cool. So in the past, I used to use a paintbrush for this, but now I can... But I'm not saying that you need to do this. This is something that you work your way up towards. But the thing is, is that, you know, it's okay to use the paintbrush. You know, no shame in that. But, you know, when you can, you can get some really beautiful little hairs doing it this way. See that? Some real beautiful tiny little hairs. And if we zoom out, you can see it looks starting to look realistic there, right? And over here, I can see that the dark, the shadow, actually comes down. Again, I'm in the medium mixture now. And again, this is all about the drawing, right? Hey, what's up there, Toe? Good to see you. Don't forget the creamer there, uh, Wendy. So Wendy's going to get coffee. And so make sure that I keep this straight and let's look here. So we have this dark coming up here, coming out like this. There we go. One second rule at all times. There we go. See how that comes down a little bit. So we're just going to make sure we make that happen. And if we're off, we can always come back and lighten that up with the eraser. No problem whatsoever. Now you can see I have my air on all the time when I'm painting. And that's an important thing to do. When you do that, you'll actually have more control because you're only worrying about pulling back on the trigger, not pushing down at the same time. That's a little too much. But if you have the air down the whole time, you definitely, you know, have more control. And if you have more control, that makes for better airbrush paintings. Definitely. And we can see we can deepen up the shadow here. And we're all setting up, you know, for pretty much the grand finale of this painting. Now, I do have some really nice cutouts, and I am going to utilize them, because what use of having them if you don't utilize them? So, here we go. So, a combination of the football method and the... But look how beautiful that looks when it's like that. When you isolate it, you really can say, you know, okay, my values look off, but when you do this, it like really comes together. <laughs> Brad says the new compressor sounds like <laughs> an aquarium pump. Well, that's good. So it's very low, right guys? So Ollie Cirk here. Hey, what's up? How you doing? The, oh, so Ali Serkir says the arrow is almost equivalent to a micron, is what you're saying. I like the siphon feeds. I have a SOTAR that's been converted into a siphon. It's your deep, it's his detail brush, but hardly have to use it. Oh, cool. Yeah, I can understand, Ali. Uh, thanks for uh, your point of view, definitely. Yeah, I, I, was a Micron user for years and when you know I met Ken and he uh, introduced me to the Extreme Patriot Arrow it was really fantastic I mean I was so happy to get it but at first I didn't like it it had the big trigger and I didn't like that the needle didn't come out too far 
and the, the backing was too big. So I made some changes to it over the years, but found that it's my favorite airbrush in the world, you know? Oh, well, thank you, John. I appreciate that. John says excellent work. I don't know if you're speaking about mine, but if you are, thank you. So I'm just going to be working on these edges here. Remember, you want to go, you want to spray away from the shield, right? You never want to spray towards, right? Now, why don't you want to spray towards? Because like a sail, the paper will billow, and we don't want that. So I'm really looking at the edge here, this shape. I want to get that shape correct. And it's a good way to look at your work a little bit differently. There we go. And we can see, so I'm in the medium mixture now, deepening up some of these values, right? All right, 18 concurrent views. Nice. Thank you guys for coming by and hanging out. Guys, don't forget to hit that like button. It, this way you I'll know that you know you guys enjoy it so you know just hit that like button I'll really appreciate that there we go and so let's let's lift this up and see how she looks Okay, so we're going to be gentle pulling that up, and there we go. So you see, we actually went ahead and uh, put a little more strength in this edge here without dirtying up the background, which is crucial. So now you see me moving around a lot. This is very important to keep moving around because I want to have an overall value ensemble and I don't want to ruin that by sticking to one area you know so this is something that we're definitely going to be mindful of and so here we can make some changes to her eye here there we go because her eye is a little bit larger here Oh, great. So Ken got you a badger and been using it out of Vega and Omnis for years. Very cool. Well, you're welcome for my channel. I love hanging out with, you know, airbrush artists and, you know, art lovers like yourself and great and airbrush artists there, Ali. So I really appreciate that. Fellow badger user, I love my my Vega 1000 for backgrounds. It just makes me so happy. Uh, I'll tell you, it really is great. That 0.5 needle nozzle combination is a thing to behold. So in the medium mixture, I'm gonna go ahead and darken uh, this shadow plane on the side of her chin. See that? And what I wanna do and this is like little uh, advanced stuff, you know. Oh, thank you, David. David said he loves how the eyes are captivating. I really appreciate that. And so you see right here, this value on the side of her chin, the cheek going down to the chin is a little bit deeper. So let's hit that with the medium mixture. So it's important to see at this stage how I move back and forth from medium to light mixture. You don't want to just, you know, because you just have light mixture or medium mixture in there, and then you have a job for, let's say, the light or medium mixture, you're going to try and do that. It's just instinct. You're going to try and do that with the wrong mixture. And you might get away with it, but it just won't be as good if you have the right mixture for the right job.
Remember, things turn towards the light from left to right and also from up and down. So make sure that you pay attention to that, right? Because it's going to be the chin as it turns down is going to get darker as you see here. And then when things go from left to right, you're going to see lighter from the other side, you know? Oh, fantastic. So Tone says he likes the ink. I appreciate that. And Wendy says, uh, I am the, the lip master. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Wendy, always, your encouragement. Lots of different undulating things going on here. Now, we do have a light here, of course, right? And it goes up and that's part of the anatomy. But one of the things you always wanna check and make sure is that whether or not your values are too close to one another or too far away from each other. So, you know, right here, they're definitely too far away. So I have the light mixture. I'm going to be about five inches away. And I'm just going to dust over just to calm that down. So when you want to just darken something, but you don't want to lose a detail, you just make sure that you go ahead and do it from the dusting from pretty far away. That really ensures that it's going to, the cone's gonna be large and it's not going to kill any of your detail. It'll just lower the value. Hey, Patty, how's it going? Good to see you. And Ali says he's a t-shirt artist, but he does do portraits with t-shirts set up. Very cool. But when he needs extra detail, his siphon speed feeds so tar. Wow, that's so great. And so, oh yeah, I gotta see that. So definitely uh, email me paintedglyphs at gmail.com, Ollie. I would love to check out your site or even just type it in right now. And uh, if we can get everyone to go ahead and check out your site, show some love, maybe subscribe. I always love doing that. So it's so great to see you, Patty. Patty just purchased an Extreme Patriot Arrow from me. So I'm so excited about the work that she's going to be doing and sharing with us with that airbrush. We always have to continue making everything turn. So important if we don't then it's going to look good, but it just will look flat. And we don't want her to look flat. We want her to look like she can step off the painting. That's what I want. Step off the paper, I should say. It's all about sculpture, sculpting. Now, I might have got a little overzealous with that nostril, and I'll revisit it in just a bit. Just taking it easy right here. So, okay, so I'm moving around and I could see that I'm a little light on the left side of the chin. So I'm just going to go ahead. And again, if I just want to dust over it and make an area darker without going ahead and changing or obliterating detail, I'm going to be about five inches. So that's one of the things I want you to do when you have your practice drills. I want you to make sure that when you're doing your practice drills that you practice accuracy from a good distance. Okay, I hope that makes sense. There we go. Yes, so actually it's the same airbrush that I was endorsing last year, Tone. Uh, but 
before you would have to purchase it and get all the parts and everything like that. Plus there was uh, maybe a change here and there since then. But now there, when you buy it from me, you get everything. You get it completely customized, ready to go. Uh, as soon as you just put the needle in it. So uh, definitely it's the same airbrush, the same DNA. Just a few changes here and there, that's all. Few changes here and there. But I'm always updating, I'm always looking to make a better mousetrap. So, you, you know, my airbrush this year from next year may be a little bit different, you know. Um, you know, I might see some advances or some changes. I'm always trying to, even with my technique, I'm always trying to push things to that next level. All right, so we hit 20 concurrent viewers. Thank you so much, guys and girls. If you go hit, hit, smash that like button for me. That would be fantastic. This way I know you guys are enjoying the content. Um, and I would really, really appreciate that if you can. No pressure. Thank you. Two more likes. I appreciate it. Thank you guys and girls, I appreciate that. Makes me realize that I'm doing something good here. Earlier on Facebook, I went ahead and put up a video that I did on YouTube nine years ago. No, 2008, forgive me, 13 years ago. So I've been doing YouTube videos since 2008, but I wasn't really serious until 2017. Uh, Patty says, well worth the purchase. Oh, thank you. Patty, you are so cool and sweet. So Patty says the airbrush was worth it. Thank you. So exciting. And it's guaranteed, too. For any reason, it's not working uh, to your liking. You, you know, you get a full refund. Uh, and if it's not working, I will fix it for you or replace it. So things happen in shipping from time to time, but you're not left out in the lurch. You know, you can contact me directly and I would take care of anyone who purchased one and there was any issues. Now, before I send it out, I completely tune it up, make sure it's working perfectly. I pack it up with lots and lots of bubble wrap and I pack the needle separately. So this way the needle isn't gonna damage the nozzle. So it's very cool. So the chances of getting it damaged are slim, especially as I'm doing them more and more and getting much better with shipping. Lots and lots of bubble wrap, uh, better boxes so it fits nice and snug. Okay, so I want to go ahead and let's darken uh, ooh, that particular my hand must be fat because that particular glove hurt. <laughs> it was so tight. Oh boy. Okay, so now let's see. I want to work on darkening her, her beautiful sweater. Let's move magnets out of the way. So it's a combination of magnets and footballs. It's a good combination, you know, the best of all worlds. So let's make sure this is correct. And if it's not, we can always adjust, right? That's no re no problem. We can always adjust. Always, always, always. So as you see, I moved the footballs, additional magnets, bada bing, bada boom. There we go. Okay, now. I'm going to start off with the light mixture and we're just going to make sure that we go away from the paper. Now I'm going with the light mixture because I want to see that I'm on the money. Going away <coughs> from from the paper, never towards the paper. You don't want to billow the paper, right? So you're gonna go 
away from the paper. So how does that compressor sound? Is it nice and quiet, guys? Is it is it better than last week's? <laughs> Just a little bit. There we go. So now I'm just going to lift it up real quick. We're just going to see exactly what we have. And we're going to put it back. I just want to make sure that Tim is on the money. Oh, look at that beautiful edge, guys. Very nice edge. And so we'll put this down and we'll come in with the medium mixture. And towards the end of this, uh, this particular live stream, we're going to come in with the white pastels. That's going to be very exciting. Hey, Scott. So Scott says uh, his came with excellent package, some nice gifts. Wow, thank you. And Scott's talking about his airbrush, and he got the 0.3 millimeter because here he had the CMSB. And he likes them both equally. So cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So thank you so much for the really good reviews on the airbrush. That makes me happy because it's so important to me uh, that, I, that I deliver something that, that really is going to uh, do exactly what you asked it to do, you know, uh, and just uh, give you that give that micron uh, precision without having to spend all that money, you know? So that's basically, you know, so when I hear that you all are liking it, that makes me very happy. Thank you for letting me know. And we're just gonna blend down here. So with the magnets, it holds it pretty, let me see. So the white is kind of, there we go, okay. So one second rule, always looking at the one second rule. You don't want to go too dark, right? And we're just going to bring this down. Remember, things go from top to bottom, which is light to dark, and from left to right, which is light from dark. So with the shirt, you're seeing as we go from the left to the right, the uh, it gets lighter there we go okay so now I think we have some nice edge work done I'm just gonna lift these up oh wow Brad says his felt broken in already that's great thank you Brad I appreciate that sir there we go and we can lighten that up but you see, we're just, you know, we're getting that whole ensemble, right? That's what we're looking looking at, which is really a lot of fun. And it's a lot of fun when it starts coming together. Uh, maybe we can work on the hair a little bit. Yeah, definitely the hair, right? I think we can definitely catch up the hair. The hair is still a little bit... Uh, kind of wispy, kind of not all there yet, right? So we could definitely make that happen. So we have our medium mixture. So the way I work on hair is I just basically uh, go back and forth and look at the large shapes, maybe go back in with an eraser, but I don't try and worry about individual hairs. What I do worry about is getting the direction correct, right? The direction of the hair, or direction of the darks or the lights. And that will make a big difference. Again, keeping that air down, right? That's very important. So also, not only am I, you know, worrying about things like the hair and the detail of the hair, 
But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and unify these large shapes. Now they may be broken up, but one of the reasons why you want to unify is because from far away you want it to really carry. If this is all broken up, you won't get that carrying of the of the whole form as a whole. So I like unifying a lot of shapes, which is good. And that was when Harvey Dinnerstein, when I studied with him, he talked about unifying shapes. Now right here, the although, you know, the eyelashes are really dark here, but they're kind of a little bit out of balance. So I'm just going to very lightly touch that with an aggressive eraser. Remember, you know, just like digital art, you know, the lighter your touch with that digital pen, same thing with anything, whether it's a paintbrush or whether it's an eraser or a pencil, the lighter the touch, the much more gentle uh, and soft the application will be. Oh, cool. Wendy says she's better. Still hasn't gotten her sense of smell and taste all the way back. Wow, but thank God you survived COVID-19. That's such a scary ordeal, but I'm so happy you're okay. As we all are. I know Bill Snagan was, uh, was positive as well. And his, and his uh, wife were and they're better thank God so as you see I'm I'm just going ahead and and darkening all these larger shapes here and I get rid of pencil lines again the air is down all the time and I'm just doing little dagger type strokes so I'm going to go back to the light mixture and darken this up because again, you're looking at the values, you know, that's important, you know, the values can be too close to one another. When you have the two airbrush system, make sure that your hoses don't get tangled up. That would be a very easy thing to do. And I say that because that has happened to me quite often. Okay, so we're working with the hair, so I have to stay focused. And you see I'm pretty far away, and I'm just bringing those values into line, right? Because they're not so far away in value. Again, right here. I'm just going to establish some of these large shapes here. And we have a large light shape here. And we're going to go ahead and establish this. Now you might say, well, Tim, why aren't you using a freehand shield up here? Or why aren't you using the paper shield up here. Well, the thing is, is that you want to make sure that, you know, you're not going to be getting rid of a soft edge that you want. I want this to be a soft edge because I want the hair to go back into space and her face to come forward. So that's why we're not going to use a freehand shield for this part of her hair. And now we just set up for the medium mixture. We can go back, right? And let's make this happen. Just deepen up these values. One second rule, gonna keep him honest. And you know, hair is really just being tenacious. 
That's really what it's all about, tenacity. come in with an eraser in a moment and you'll see how he just very slowly I mean this is hair right it's not it's not a fingerprint you know we don't have to be exact here but you just have to get like the impressionist you want to get the impression of what the hair is doing you don't want to put too much detail and attention to the hair because the attention needs to be on your main subject which are the eyes and whatnot, the nose, her lips. Now right here, it's a little bit sharp. You see this sharpness right here? Now I'm just going to very lightly just calm that down. Just bring that sharpness down. You don't want sharpness in a female's portrait. So you see that? Keeping everything soft. But like I said, you can have the most aggressive eraser, but the lightest touch, you can make it into a new eraser. It's that easy, you know? And so now we're going to come in with this eraser, and we're going to start pulling out some of these lights. But the important thing is not to be so exact with the hair, but make sure you get the direction correct. Direction is everything. Because if you get the direction wrong, then it's just going to look really weird, like the hair is doing something uh, it's not supposed to. There we go. Just pulling this over. Same thing here, like little dagger strokes, right? Just, just like that. And people might say, you know, Tim, you're going so slow. But, you know, the main thing is, is that you enjoy yourself. So why speed up, you know? Go at a leisurely pace. It's all about, you know, enjoying it, you know? It's very important. Oh, thank you so much there, John. I appreciate it. John's doing some really great stuff with his uh, portraits using the India ink. And Patty says that I make it look easy. Oh, well, I, it, you know what it is? It just, uh, you know, once you get these uh, principles down, it does become easier. So I hope that, you know, eventually it becomes this easy for you guys too but you know what i always say it's simple but not easy right like how to do it is simple but not easy because it takes a while to get the muscle memory and all of that stuff but definitely is attainable it has nothing to do with talent it has all to do with tenacity and Oh, so Wendy's talking about her a little kitty, so I'm glad he's doing better, thank God. Yeah, when our cats and dogs get sick, it's so sad, you know, because they're like little kids, and, they're, you know, they're so innocent. So, yeah, so I'm so happy that the kitty's doing much better. Okay, so we did some uh, light mix, the, the medium mixture over there. And let's see if we can come again with some of those hairs. Let's see. See that? See how you can do those really tiny hairs, which is pretty cool. Really. And then you're just going to be working on the scalp and the, and the hair and how they interact with one another. 
paint both the positive and the negative forms, right? So that's very important. And then let's move on over to this side and see what we can do on this side. Oh, Wick says he really appreciated the critique on on his artwork. Wow. Oh, oh yeah, you did some really great stuff. I remember that, Rick. Yeah, you really, I really love what you did with the, I believe it was a boat. It was really fantastic. Just great work. So thank you for sharing that, Rick. That's for sure. So the important thing is not to get exact, right? You don't have to get exact, but you have to get the direction, right? The direction is all important. Because the direction is off, then that's not good. Then you're losing the character of um, the model, right? Because a hairline is one of the most telltale things when, when painting uh, a person, because the hairline really makes a big difference, you know, with a lot of different factors. Let's zoom out. There we go. So you can see we have some little stray hairs here. I know this is tight detail and everything like that, but, you know, it's just really important because the hairline determines the, the distance from the eyebrows to the hairline so all those things you know seem like they're going too much into detail but it's actually very important again in the light mixture let's move on over to the medium mixture all right, 22, nice, 22 concurrent viewers. Thanks guys, so those who are here, guys and girls, hit that like button for me, I'd appreciate it. We'll try and get to 20 likes by the end of this live stream. I know we can do it. So in the next week or so, I'm going to have a really great treat for you. I'm not going to let you know who the guest is, but it's going to be very exciting. Uh, we're going to have uh, one of the airbrush greats uh, here with us doing another interview on this channel. So stay tuned, everybody. That's for sure. Um, I'm excited, and I know when I have it, you know, when I have a date actually firm, I'll let you guys know. John says he likes cats because they taste like chicken. Oh my goodness. Oh, Wendy says that my interview with Drew was awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, uh, Drew was amazing. You know, just so gracious and uh, just had a lot of fun just hanging out. And that's what I try to do with these live streams. Just like hang out and talk about, you know, how much I love the guests' work. You know, we had Kent and... We had Mr. Steve Leahy and Drew. All, I'm all big fans of all of those uh, gentlemen's work. Very much so. He definitely is. And so I remember Alf. Remember the show Alf? He liked cats as well. <laughs> And you see right here, it's nice and dark. So you see, like right now, we're paying more attention to the hair. But I really think it's really working because it's sort of bringing, bringing some of this detail together. And also, uh, if you ask me, it's helping us to really get the proportions of the face. That's why I say, don't worry about the likeness too early, guys. If you do, you're going to be searching for something that's not there yet because you don't have everything in place. 
So case in point would be like uh, this area right here. If I zoom this over here. So we see how this shape is a little bit larger over here. Okay, so let me just double check over here. Okay, so I'm just going to take a quick break. I'm just going to go ahead and put the kettle on because I need a cup of tea. So right now it's at 1041. I'll be like two minutes. I just got to put the kettle on. Okay, so I am back. So when we hear the whistle, that's when uh, I'm going to take a quick break to make myself a little bit of tea. Just a little bit of green tea. Oh, so Patty, you, you just lost a little kitty or a cat. I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> John says everyone needs a cat to adore. No, a dog to adore them and a cat to ignore them. Pretty funny. I love cats. I'm a real cat person. Okay, we'll zoom out and see where we are. And Wendy says calves are so cute. Uh, yes, depends on whose calves they are. <laughs> yes, calves can be very cute, that's for sure. Now, I thought you were talking about baby cows. Okay, I thought you were talking about the back of someone's leg, you know, lower leg. You can see where my mind is going lately. Okay, well, lately, always. Let's move this over. <laughs> well, I'm just being honest, Wendy. That was a knee-jerk response, no pun intended, when you're talking about lower legs. But, yeah. Okay, so now as we're working, we can go back to the light mixture. And so I can definitely see that, you know, with the light mixture, since we're darkening some areas here, like a domino effect, it darkens some areas over here as well. And like I said, if you want to just darken a larger area without killing the detail, then what you would do is basically increase your distance. Oh, Brad said it dipped down to make negative 15 overnight, and that's in Celsius, but it got up over one plus Celsius, which is around 33 degrees. So it must have been very cold, holy cow. Little tiny little freckles over here on her forehead. Just they're ever so tiny. But let's go ahead and put them in. The trick with freckles is you want to keep them transparent. You don't want them looking like she has chicken pox. So 
So with freckles, they're very light and you can see through them. So that's what you want to do. So the kitchen is right by my studio here. So you're going to hear the kettle going in a second. I'm going to have some green matcha tea, which is really very healthy for us. And yes, we got to keep those calves warm, especially the cute ones, you know? Wendy's getting muscle cramps. <laughs> I'm a big fan of calves. And it's, you know, so even when you're, you're doing like these uh, little freckles here, we're actually also getting a sense of the skin texture, which is really great. So now that I moved this, you know, everything to this studio uh, that originally was in my bedroom, but now I moved it to the main studio, actually my YouTube studio, the kitchen's right there. So that's fantastic, you know. Uh, so David says, well, I will be still watching Tim on TV, but won't be able to respond. Okay, no problem. Glad you're there. If you have any questions that come up and you're unable to respond, just go ahead and uh, email me, and I'll get back to you, David, as always. And let's double check. And Calligrapha says, Wendy, does that work? Now, what did Wendy say? Uh, oh, tonic water. Yeah, I love tonic water. I love the taste of it, but I actually, you know, my lips go numb from it. And of course, that's quinine water, if I'm not mistaken, right? Now also, if you're doing someplace delicate, so let's say an area where you want to darken, let's say the nose, but you don't want to uh, make harsh decisions because if you mess up at the nose, it will be, you know, a very bad place to have it because it's such an important part of the actual portrait. So, you know, you can slowly darken that up with the light mixture if you need to. They took quinine water off the market because they weren't making enough money on it. But they still have the tonic water. Oh, Hillbilly says his tonic is Maple Crown Royal. Wow, Maple Crown Royal. That sounds great. Now, remember as we work, we always want to make sure that we're not ignoring one particular area, right? So, I'm just going to look at the right side of this hair here. And I think I'm ignoring this a little bit. So, I'm just going to come in a little bit with the light mixture here. And make sure that we get this shape here. And not ignore this area. See that? So we get a whole feeling of it. It looks like, you know, you kind of like, oh, that's no big deal. But once we put that in, we really can see, you know. Oh, wow. So, so I hope that works. Give that a shot there, boy. Cramps really suck, right? Okay, so you know that sound. That means my tea is ready. So let me go make my green matcha tea.
So just hang out, talk amongst yourselves about quinine water. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's see. So that's good. It seems like my live stream is even doing much better when I'm not here. So that's uh, either a good thing or a bad thing. So cool. So glad that you guys stuck around. That's really great. So let's see. So I have my green tea here. Let's see. You guys can see my tea, right? So really good lots of lemon in there and matcha tea is really supposed to be fantastic for health right so so anything now with this COVID-19 going on so here's a side view of my painting and there we are okay so maybe we can darken this just a bit there we go and I like the way little freckles are coming out so that's fun and so I was inspired by Drew Blair, you know, when we had our interview talking about freckles. So, yeah, I was very inspired by Drew. That's for sure. What brand of compressor? This is a Silent Air. It is a uh, the Silent Air, I believe, the 50TA, I think, or something like that. Oh, Wendy drinks... Uh, matcha and so does uh, patty very cool yeah it's just delicious and so good for you you know olive leaf is that a tea that sounds pretty cool i did i did get a silent air i'm still going to have my 
my uh, so I'm doing a two airbrush compressor system now the reason being is is that I I live above a family right I mean I the two family house I have the upstairs apartment they have the below stairs and so basically I'm going to use my uh, I actually bought an eight gallon California air tools because the other one kind of died and actually did die and so I'm going to use the California air tools during business hours and at night I'll be using this little it's a tiny silent air it's only like one gallon so me working eight to ten hours a day used to be six to eight now it's eight to ten airbrushing I will completely destroy it it will die uh, if I if I was to uh, go ahead and use this one gallon for my only air air compressor so it's good for at night when I want to work at 3 4 in the morning or something like that you know so that's why I have it so I'm gonna have a video review on the uh, California I mean a uh, silent air 50t and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. That's coming up pretty soon. Oh no, Buddy fell out of bed. And oh, that's, that's, I hope Buddy's okay. And, uh, and it says, Ron, absolutely no quinine if you're on statins. Oh, that's true. Be careful. And let's see what else we have. Philip says, how are you tacking the shield down? Oh, okay. The shield, I always, I know I use uh, magnets, and uh, so that's pretty good. I have like one of those like, like wood uh, metal bulletin boards, which works really great. So that's really fantastic. And Rick says, Tim, you would love chaga tea, incredible antioxidant. I gotta try it. Chaga tea is that available like at the supermarket? That would be great. I am enjoying the magnets. There's a company out there in Anaheim called Amazing Magnets. You find all different shapes. Oh, I will look into that. Thank you, guys. Two very good, very cool uh, tips there. And Tone says, that's what I need, something silent for four. Yes, definitely. Because when I was working on this painting, this one came at like a last minute where I decided I wanted to work on this. Let me darken it. So, uh, so yeah, so I was working on this yellow paper and, but this was just something that happened that came about like at four in the morning or something. And I just decided to do it. I couldn't sleep. And so in that case, you know, so yeah, so this is pretty much the color of this one. I'm really enjoying the hair. I still got a ways to go. But uh, thanks, Tone. Thank you so much, Colette. And just really enjoying it, enjoying working on a different colored paper. Uh, this is a nice gold paper. So, you know, but like I say, uh, sometimes you have this like three o'clock in the morning uh, epiphany or, or inspiration and you need a quiet compressor. Plus you never know if I'm staying somewhere you know, and I need to work, at least with this, I will not be able to, I will be able to still work, you know, so, you know, if you are a professional, I definitely recommend getting a silent air, but don't make it your, your work costs, uh-uh, use a regular compressor during regular business hours, but during those quiet nights, you need that, for those late nights, you know, so yeah, so that's my my take. Don't get a silent air if that's going to be your only one, uh, because you're not going to be able to afford like a four gallon. That's crazy. You can afford like the one gallon, which would be fine, and you could use that, you know, very easily, you know. But definitely, you do not want it to be your workhorse. You will kill it. Now, when I say work costs, like I work with the air on, I work continuously. I don't have like 10 minute sessions. I have like three minute, three hour sessions, you know? Hey, Chris, how's it going? Better late than never, my friend. So glad you're here. 
Hey, that Coquito was amazing. I'm almost done with it. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chris made this Coquito, which is a, is, it's from Puerto Rico, and it's sort of like a rum and milk, and oh man, it's just some cream, really good. Best I ever had came from Chris, definitely. I mean, Chris, uh, just amazing. I was married to a Puerto Rican woman. I dated many Puerto Rican women, so I know all about Coquito, and I know that that was the best Coquito ever. That's for sure. All right, so we are making good. Okay, so I told you guys we were gonna come in with the white pastel, and I'm not going to disappoint you. So let's make some things pop. Let's get ready to rumble. So. This is the fun part. You know, we have this, bam. We're going to have our paper stumps. We're gonna get our white pastel pencil, just like right here. And we're going to deposit some pastel. Now this is soft pastel, not oil pastel. Oil pastel and soft pastels are worlds apart. Okay. First thing, we always begin with the eyes. Am I right, my friends? Let's make that happen. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in on this beautiful Irish woman's eyes here. Here we go. And you know, you might get overzealous and make it a little bit bigger or, or smaller. So Tone has the Jet Pro. Oh, wow. Okay, that's too loud at night. Yeah, so you feel my pain. So me and Tone, Tone is, you know, that's his career. So yeah, Tone's going to need something like that. Look under a place called the Art Supply... Art, I think it's art supply sauce. Look under that. I'm going to get a link for you where I got mine. And it's a very good price and the customer service was out of this world. It's going to be in my video, but I'll send it to you, Tone. You know, it's something that you need to purchase and then forget about it, you know, because the price is crazy. And if you think about it, you know, you're, you're going to kick yourself, but the thing is, you need it for your business, and once you do it, it's done. I did. I did get the Silent Air, uh, uh, Wendy, and uh, saved up for it a very long time. And, uh, you know, definitely needed it for when I work late at night, you know. Now, my neighbors are great. They're fantastic, and they would never complain. They're always so encouraging. But I just felt bad, and I don't want to do that. So you see how we're coming in with that white pastel. Bam, you know. It is running now. You might be able to hear it, right? Do you hear it just a little bit? Um, well, right now it's not going off, but it will, because I'm not airbrushing at this moment. So I'm just going to put in... Just love this stage. Okay, what we do in one eye, we're gonna do in the next eye. So let's get ready to rumble. And Tone says he ordered one from an airbrush artist in the group and wow, that's so horrible, my friend. Oh man. I'm really sorry to hear that tone. So I want to get that translucency, but let's say like right here, Tim, you went a little too crazy with the white, but I can just tap it like, like that with the sound effect. And right here, we're just gonna just kiss her eye, just like that there, right? Just kiss her. And that is, I'm so sorry to hear that tone. But don't worry, things will even out, you know? Maybe I can find you a good deal. Maybe you'll be happy with the deal that you would get uh, with this company.
So I'm going to make it go off, and you guys will let me know if it's nice and quiet. I'm just going to hold down the air a little bit, and you guys can let me know. Now they say it gets more quiet with time. So do you hear it now? Is it very loud? So it, there it goes, Just it just finished cycling. Like I said, it's a very small compressor and uh, it's not gonna be your workhorse. It's going to be something that you'll be able to do for like two hours at a time, like late at night or something like that. Uh, So I'm with the white pastel, I'm just gonna lightly touch her face. My kettle was louder. <laughs> and let's zoom out here. Okay, so you can see when we start working with the white pastel, she starts coming alive a little bit. And that's what I say, you know, don't worry about lightness so early. It's only gonna start happening now. What's this? This is hour number 11, right? So, uh, oh, have a great night, Patty. Thanks for stopping by. Any questions with your new airbrush, always feel free to contact me. So cool. Don't work too hard, Patty. And again, we're just going to very lightly kiss her eye there, bring in that translucency of her eye. What kind of, it is the uh, Silent Air 50T, I believe. It's a one, it's a 0.9 gallon uh, air compressor. Now, it really, I don't recommend it as your workhorse if you're a pro. If you airbrush every once in a while, I think it's great as your premier airbrush compressor. But if you're doing like six to eight hours like me, you want to make sure that you're just using it uh, to uh, late at night sessions, you know, uh, like I am now. So I hope that helps. So now you can see I can really start turning the forms with the white pastel. I mean, really, things are starting to happen. And that's what it is, you know, with this technique, it just, it just falls together. You know, she comes together. Eight sixty nine dollars on Amazon. Yes, I actually got that compressor for far less. I think it was $6.99. Hey, there is Mr. Todd. How are you? So, yes. Yeah, so, with the company, I got it for $6.99, I believe. Plus it was like uh, something like $60 for shipping, but you gotta expect that. And uh, so, you know, look for the best price. It is made in Italy, that is true. And uh, now their, their warehouse, uh, where they usually come from is Houston, Texas. So we're gonna use the white pastel for the highlights, but also to uh, work on, you know, refining some of these shadow shapes and some of the, some of the detail in those shapes, because light's bouncing all around, right? So it's really important to make sure. Oh, four hours max a night, definitely. Yeah, that would be the most that, you know, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to kill it, right? You would want to, you know, make it last and uh, if you got one that has like a bigger tank then you're talking big big money so that's like outside of my range so this was the best of both worlds where I could do both so tomorrow I have an eight gallon uh, California air tools coming tomorrow and like I said I'm gonna have a tube compressor uh, after a certain hour I'll just you know fire up the uh, Silent air. It is the it is a hefty price, and it's something that I saved up for a very long time. Uh, and also, I would be losing money if I was unable to work like five in the morning sometimes when I need to. 
So it was really, a, a, for me, it was more economical to, you know, be able to airbrush as opposed to not being able to airbrush. So it was really like a point of, for me, since I make a living from this, uh, you know, it was important for me to make that decision. Believe me, it hurt financially. It really did. Um, yeah, so Tone and I are compressor killers because we work so many hours. The last uh, California Air Tools that, that died was only one, one, one year. And I don't mess with them. If they go, I don't go ahead and try and fix them. They're very dangerous. Oh, yeah, so glad that you're here, Todd. That's so cool, you know. 869 on Amazon, I think several thousand if you get, yes, exactly. The bigger one is just, that's not cost effective. So that was not a good decision if I was going to get that big one. In the long run, it would be, but I wouldn't be able to shell out that kind of money yet. We got to wait until I become a big time artist. Hopefully that's soon. Hopefully, right? Oh, yes, exactly. So what happens is, like, I know a lot of people who airbrush once a week or so, and their compressors will last a long time. But since, you know, most airbrushes, airbrush artists who are experienced, they leave their air on when they paint. So that means not only are you painting for eight hours, but you're leaving the air on for eight hours. And I think that's what really does the damage, you know. So, uh, so here we are with the white, and it's really, I'm actually happy with what's happening, but we have to make sure that we pay attention to what it's doing, because in her lower lip here, there's a texture. So if I was going to do, let's say, you know, a straight on highlight on her lower lip, that just would not work. So let's take a look together. See, because it's very textural. So I'm just going to very lightly, just try and find some of these light shapes. I wouldn't even think they're highlights. They're really just light shapes. Oh, so Tone doesn't paint with the air on. Okay, that's cool. So that's, that's pretty good. I, I paint on the, just because it helps me. But they're, like Drew said, there's no one way to paint. You know, we got to embrace all different ways. You know, and one way is not inherently better. Uh, it's all what you're looking for. So always, always one second rule when you're putting in detail like this. Mr. Steve, happy St. Patty's Day. Great to see you, sir. Dr. Steve Morale, Morale. Uh, thank you so much. I, uh, Morale. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Steve. It's so great to see you. How's everything? How, how is everything uh, with your practice? Hopefully... People are getting the, patients are getting the COVID-19 um, uh, vaccine. So that's a lot of good news, right, sir? So it's always good to see Dr. Steve, I'm telling you, always, always. So I said Dr. Steve Morreale. Did I say that correct, sir? The nameless subscriber says, speaking of making a living with airbrushes, can you give us an idea of how many commissions you normally get and how well that does for you? Um, yes, I think, I think with, uh, you know, commissions come and go, right? You, you really don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, you just have to make sure that you have uh, a lot of streams of income, not just one. So when the commissions don't come through, maybe the classes come through, that sort of thing. And, oh, so 
So Dr. Steve said he got his uh, immunization, which is great. And he only speaks <laughs> just a little bit. That's good. Cantonese. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And Raul says, uh, you can replace motors on those burnt out compressors with refrigerator motors if you're handy. There are a lot of DI, I would love to do that. I'm just afraid because I know those things explode. And so I'm not mechanically inclined. I wish I was. I was talking to John the other day, uh, John Payne, and yeah, he said the same thing. But I know where my, you know, how do you say, where my talent lies, and it's not in anything like that, you know? So, hey, Mr. Steve Johnson, good to see you. So great. Yes, yeah, Steve's around during the pastel time, which is great. And as you can see, I, I'll lay down some pastel and I'll just tap it to bring it back. And so with this pastel, I can really bring out some, some of that, which is, you know, I can bring out some of the uh, shapes within the shadows here. See that? So it doesn't look so, uh, you know, it looks like she's more alive, which is really important. Uh, so Steve says he's been looking at those. Uh, yes, you know, because that's basically what it is. It's a refrigerator, uh, a refrigerator compressor. It sounds very much like a refrigerator compressor, or even like what uh, Mr. Brad said. It sounded like an aquarium, and it does. Uh, now, is it as quiet as I imagine? No, they're not like unbelievably quiet, but you can work without waking people up. They're not like, you know, otherworldly quiet, but they are quiet. But as you remember last week, that compressor was just going nuts. It was, what happened with that compressor all of a sudden when it was filling up, it kept filling up further and further. And then all of a sudden the, uh, that valve went off and it was like, it was pretty scary. So I'm like, I'm not a compressor tech. So when that happens, it's time for a new compressor, right? That's basically what I do. And so Dr. Steve, has uh, I think gotten much better with the amount of uh, COVID-19 cases that you're getting. And, uh, and does that mean you get more time to relax, hopefully? I know it's been a rough year for you, that's for sure. And thank you so much for being a frontline worker. I mean, we owe you guys a huge amount of gratitude. And, you know, it's, you know, I can't say it enough, you know. Oh, Colette said those eyes. She loves the way the eyes are coming. Thank you, Colette. I do have fun painting eyes. That's always been my focus ever since I was a kid. You know, people would always say, Tim, you're, you concentrate on the eyes so well. And, you know, I just love the idea of painting something where she's looking back at you and you kind of have that interaction. Wow, thank you, Steve. Steve says, uh, uh, Steve Johnson says she looks gorgeous and Oh, Dr. Steve says, yes, like numbers went down, thank goodness, and still really busy in the office. Busier in the office now, more annual wellness visits, catching people, oh, great. Well, when you're ready to, uh, when you are ready, my friend, Steve, to work on a project together, you let me know and we'll do that together, okay? So, uh, you know, we'll get you going when you have time. And, and uh, Dr. Steve did this great portrait of his uh, nieces, which I thought was really great a while back ago. I think that was like a year and a half ago, right, Dr. Steve? Around there. And Dr. Steve, he could use an airbrush, trust me. He's good. He's good. And Texas listed the math thing. Yeah, that's kind of weird, right? I'm not sure that was a good idea. Raul said he built two and he's building a third. 
I would love it if you if you made a video of it. That would be fantastic, Raul. Or even just, you know, uh, maybe a video of it. Or maybe even a blog post or something. Um, just to let us know that it's not as scary as someone like me would be like, Oh my God, it's going to blow, you know? You know, head for the hills. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, def, definitely not a, a minded person, you know. Uh, I'm definitely not mechanically inclined. I'm mechanically declined. And Dr. Steve says he's getting some remodeling done at this place. That's, hey, that's good news. That's fantastic. And, uh, oh, you want to have a workspace for a project? That would be fantastic. Uh, good news, I forgot my mistakes. Oh, hey, that's I always try and forget my mistakes, too. Uh, and so, you know, then we go in fresh, right? And we're not worried about, um, not so worried about, you know, making that mistake again. I'm going to do this corner of this lip here. And this is the beauty of the Extreme Patriot Arrow, the custom. Look at that. Wow. See, the airbrush, the airbrush definitely delivers. And you guys can, guys and girls can see how it delivers, right? It really does. Raul says he could use the money. Yeah, definitely. Uh, where do you get the, uh, oh, where do you get the fridge motor? Maybe... Uh, oh, Steve says, uh, Steve Johnson says, great texture. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, really pay attention to what's happening. And while paying attention, that really, sort of the texture kind of reveals itself, right, Steve? And we just... It's like a little reflected light right in here. You'll see it. Look at that little baby reflected light in there. And so right here we have a little bit of a highlight there. And so there's a lot of turning of the forms. You know, one form turns and then it's inter it's adjacent to another form and that form turns. So you can see here, as uh, this form over here sort of turns as well underneath that cheekbone. And we can zoom out and see how we're doing. Yeah, so now it's time for some white pastel here to Remember, you know, if the light is on the upper right, so that means anything facing the light on the upper right is going to have the most light. So we are going to go ahead. I haven't seen Willie in the past two weeks. I hope he's doing well. And if you're seeing this, uh, Willie, in recording, we just want to let you know we miss you. And hey, Mr. Paul, how are you? How you feeling? I hope you're feeling 100%. It's great to see you. And let's see here. Todd says, it seems like I need a new airbrush like I need a whole head. <laughs> you just need my airbrush, sir. That's all. And, uh, and let's see what else. Dr. Steve says, uh, oh, Dr. Steve is saying his eyes are old and he had to enlarge the text. <laughs> Hey, that's why I got these magnifying glasses, Dr. Steve. Same here. And the naval subscriber is saying, being mechanically inclined isn't too much different from art. just takes a lot of patience and have to think for a second before you make your adjustments. Yes, but I admire you because I think that is a definite, definite vocation. Because I know that I just don't have it. And I wish I did. Because I can't even put like an office chair together. It just ends up to be a, a mythic struggle. And I usually lose. 
And so as you can see, there are times when I go a little crazy with the white and I can just tap it and just pull off that white just like so, which is really cool. And oh, great, great to hear. I'm gonna get that uh, those images for you for our next project, Paul. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. So I'll get them for you. I appreciate your patience as always. Uh, Okay, and thanks, Paul. I appreciate that. So, Todd says, uh, uh, oh, great, Todd. You let me know. I'll take good care of you. Send you some free gift as well. Hey, Mike S. says, looking great. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Mike. So, I'm enjoying this painting. It's going to be done next week, which is St. Patrick's Day. And how fitting, uh, finishing the Irish last on St. Patty's Day. I think that's very poetic and so and the great thing is you can go back and forth with the white pastel uh, you know and then you go and then with the with the light mixture you can get real subtle one of the things I want you to see like you see on the lips on the left side you normally would want to delineate the lips because that's the way it is. The lips have to be the shape. But her lip actually disappears, uh, kind of blends in with the upper part uh, below the nose, right? So, so try not to put in detail that's not there because you're going to want to because it's our subconscious getting in the way. So. If, a, if an inkjet printer can do it, so can we, you know? Oh, internet problems. Oh, man. So I'm so glad that's resolved. That's for sure. So this was a, this, this live stream went so fast. And I just want to thank everybody for that. And uh, if you haven't, go ahead and hit that like button for me. Just let me know that, you know, everyone enjoyed it. And I'm doing the right thing. Um... You know great content and everything it's good to know and it's good for for youtube you know youtube will push it to other people who might need to see it which is good and so yeah it's different you know my first irish woman you know thank you so much dr steve i appreciate that and Steve Johnson says, Tim, your portraits are superb, just consistently good time and time again. Wow, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. Dr. Steve, I want to say thank you. Uh, it means so much to me, and uh, it's just great. And Dr. Steve, your support is so important to me, and it just really encourages me. And so... What we're going to do, Dr. Steve, when you're ready, we're going to have a class together and we're going to work on your portrait. I have some really great techniques you're going to love, Dr. Steve. So when you're ready, when you're done remodeling, we're going to work together. So you're going to enjoy that. And that's good. That's included with your very generous Patreon support. And so Brad says, great feed. Thanks. Uh, she's really looking great. Thank you so much. I'm really enjoying her, everybody. And yes, looking forward to that myself, Dr. Steve. You ain't kidding. I'm really looking forward to it. John, have a good night. So I always wait to 11.30 because I always give you guys. Colette, have a great night. Wendy, my guest. Chris, have a good night. Coquito, Chris, you know, Boricua. Viva Puerto Rico, okay? That was amazing. Thank you so much for that Coquito. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. David, good to see you. Have a great night. Please take care of yourself, my friend. I want you healthy, and that's so important to me. Raul, have a good night. It's 11.30. You guys rock. You guys are the stars of this live stream every week. And I want you to know that Tone, everyone, and uh, you guys are the best. Yes, 
Yes, whippa, right, Chris? <laughs> and Hillbilly, you take care of yourself, Mike, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of it every week. You guys, I would not know what to do if Wednesday nights did not exist. So thank you for everything. So take care, guys.